What's going on guys? Vic be back with a Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, the JVL Orion Free 99. It works. <laughs> what a journey it's been. Let's talk about it. I'm so happy it's done. <laughs> Alright guys, you know Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You would see everything. We have the virtual pin, the machine, Bride of Pinbot is finally complete. Those videos are soon to come. Working on the virtual pinball machine from Illinois. But on this one today, we're gonna to talk about that JVL 399 Orion. Man, I uh, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. And my neighbor, Larry, that hangs out with me, old dude, 70 years old, he goes, Vic, man, you could do anything, bro. <laughs> man, what a story I have with this. I am so happy, you have no idea. This thing, honestly, it's awesome. Very surprised by it, but to get to this stage, man, what a challenge it has been. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, again, got this free on Marketplace. If you haven't seen the video, go back and see my video. It says they're free 99 Marketplace. Fine. I didn't pay a dime for this thing, but after a $56 piece, we are back in functioning order, coin, mex, and all. Now, I'm not going to lie. I almost junked this. I was going to throw it out because finding this one specific piece was honestly, I'm gonna call it impossible to find. But luckily, somebody posted it on eBay. Uh, I right now shot me fixing it. I think I'm gonna cut to that. This way you can understand like the board, what happened. And then after you see me fixing it and bringing it back to life, I'll come back and talk normally. So without further ado, let's cut to me kind of organizing and fixing and showing you this board that I got. All right, check it out. We're gonna finally finalize this Orion. I'm gonna be cutting this in uh, because you're gonna be watching me fully standing next to it a lot, but it's just kind of crazy. Look at this. This right here, I don't even know what this is, like a 12 by like six. This little cage setup right here with the motherboard, this is the entire heart of the system. Custom power supply here and everything. It's so crazy. Uh, again, I've had my experience with Mega Touches, but this this JVL setup is a whole different animal. It's even crazier that um, you know how the system is. It actually uses that right there. Can you see that? This is what the heart of the system really is. It is this compact flash card. This has everything from the boot partition to the games. It's all in this, and it's a shocking whopping, let's see if the camera could focus, 512 meg compact flash card. Isn't that mind boggling? <laughs> 512 megs. And in this 512 megs is over a hundred touchscreen games. It's, it's crazy, I've never seen a compact flash card. Doing some research, uh, you could find those in like digital cameras. But anyway, let me tell you the little story, the little journey I had. Basically, uh, you know, going on a forum, I believe it was called Arcade Controls. Um, there's a whole section devoted just for Mega Touch and JVL. There was a guy there, I forgot his name. He was helping me through the process. Basically, I sent him pictures. I, I posted uh, a forum thing and I posted pictures of like my motherboard. And I had a feeling that maybe like somebody tinkered before and didn't have the right ports. This is like old school motherboard, but kind of motherboard status. You got COM ports, you got two COM ports. You then have basically two to three USB ports. And then there's like a keyboard port. And then apparently this keyboard port is also the audio port. A lot of stuff going on. So for like a day or two, I'm battling going back and forth. And I'm like, maybe I don't have like the... um the port, maybe like maybe whoever touched it before, maybe they, they rearranged stuff. And uh, basically, long story short, I just I kept getting this I.O. board error. So it's crazy. 
you know, honestly, that's just how this stuff is. Even with Mega Touches, it's so difficult to find parts, to find boards. That JBL right now, how you see it there without the door open, honestly, after I shot the video at the Super Bowl, I had to just let it sit. Uh, no joke, today is March 19th. So from a couple days after Super Bowl till now, that JVL has just been sitting there and I was almost honestly on the verge of junking it. Uh, you'll hear me talk about that when I'm standing next to it. But basically, what I wanna get into is the actual IO board. This is what needed replacing, but what is really crazy is that this broken IO board, it still shows signs of life, meaning there's basically three LEDs. Once the unit turns on, there's three LEDs, and in anyone's sense of mind, you would think that it has life to it because the LEDs, the lights on it, are on. Anyway, like I said before, I, it was it's so difficult to find pieces and parts. I'm looking on this forum, I'm looking on eBay, I'm doing Google searches. I can't find anything. Apparently this is a JP20 board or a JP30 board. That's another thing. And like everybody's boards have different markings. Like this old one I have is a Rev 5.2. So I'm looking for like this exact board and basically it was just impossible to find this exact board. The key though to this board is that it does have a very unique slot. It's got a unique slot right here. Keep your eye right, you see that right here? This right here is a battery. A battery goes here, and again, the person before this, when I had it, it had two wires coming out of it, and you can kind of see also that there are some soldering burnt marks. I believe that this was the cause of why the I.O. board is. I didn't do this. This was here before. There was actually two wires connected to it. The wires fell off. Uh, but the biggest thing was to find a board that has this battery compartment thing. So looking online, I'll probably post a couple pictures now. There are boards, there are I.O. boards like this, but it doesn't have the battery. And I'm like, I'm not gonna take my chance and get the wrong I.O. board. I never had a JVL. So sure enough, luckily, somebody posts a JVL board. And the hardest thing about eBay, eBay is that, you know, people, they don't really know how to name their stuff, I guess you could say. They don't really know the correct, uh, it's really the correct name. Um, apparently this was pulled from a JVL Echo. I have no idea what that is. I'm going to right now just disconnect this because I want to show you the real reason, and I don't want to break it, these clips are just brutal. I'm going to show you the real reason why I purchased it. And like I mentioned before, I saw that. That right there is what I saw. I saw the battery. Once I saw the battery, I was like, oh, this has to be it. It's... It's, it's got to be. Again, like I said, I'm going to post a picture right here of this one that was on the eBay listing and then the ones, the other ones that I see it. And if you look very carefully next to this kind of um, key, it's a key, you're going to see there's no battery. People just have like a metal bracket here. And there's like another like circle popping out somewhere here. Luckily, I saw this end and I was like, oh, yes, awesome. Now, again, I have an Orion. This came from a JVL Vor Vortex or a JVL Echo. Uh, and it did have this metal cage. I don't have this metal cage. I have my metal cages here. It's this whole motherboard piece and all that. But basically, as you can see, like in the ad, you know, the battery port in this cage is here. That was the main thing I was looking for. I was like, I got to make sure I have this battery. Now, what's really crazy is the asshole. I'm going to call him an asshole. These fucking eBay assholes. Um, I put an offer in. The guy originally wanted 56 bucks for this thing. But... Obviously, in his description, he goes there, no returns. I don't know if it's working, untested. The biggest thing is that they don't take the returns and all that. So, I placed an offer for 15 bucks. And the most annoying thing, especially when it comes to eBay, is that you send an offer and then it's like a two-day wait period. And um, it doesn't even show you if the guy read the message. I got no reply. eBay sends me a message saying, hey, your offer expired. Do you want to send another one? I then sent like a $20 offer. Same thing, no reply, nothing. And I'm, I'm even messaging the dude as I put an offer in. I asked him number one for more pictures because he only has this one picture, the one picture I showed you, that's the only picture that's there. So I'm like, can you take a picture of the rear? I wanted to compare it to mine. Does it have this Rev 5.2 like mine? And it doesn't, but he didn't send me any pictures. We're going back and forth. And basically I'm getting nothing. It's not even a back and forth. I'm sending requests. I'm getting nothing out of this. 
Three offers go by, I get nothing. And now you gotta think, it's two days, a week goes by. And uh, I get no reply and I didn't buy it. All of a sudden, this guy jacks the price up to $90 for this board. And I'm like, what an asshole. I, I have a feeling that he was probably, he probably got the emails of me offering and then he went and jacked up the price. And I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not gonna stoop to his level, I'm just gonna wait it out. Sure enough, like three or four days later, I get an email from eBay saying, hey, you know, price reduced. And it went back to $56. I said to him, I had to bite my, I, I just had to bite the bullet. I was like, fuck it. This guy's a fucking asshole. He's not even going to answer my questions. Fuck it. My neighbor was like, oh, if you have like that eBay protection, if it offers you eBay protection, you could still return it. I was like, yeah, but his, I, anyway, long story short, $56 later, I got this in the mail. Not to mention it took a week to get it because this FedEx. It, this cage is useless to me. It also had like extra parts and wires coming out of it. And I'm like, oh man. But basically, long story short, I put it in this and sure enough, I got life. Now, I just want to put this thing back. I just want to, I just want to put this thing back and finally finalize this. But I want to show you one last piece about this I.O. board. This right here is again, it's a battery. This is like, um, what does it say? It's a 3.6 volt battery. Size is half of a double A. I don't know, that's what it says on this, right? So I got this, I got this IO board. This this hanging thing, I'm gonna explain what's going on here. Um, I got the IO board in, I put it in, powered on the Orion, and then sure enough, boom, I got life. And uh, the one thing I noticed that my touch screen was off, but then I had to go into settings. This worked, it was awesome. I adjusted, I calibrated my screen, I was good to go. Now I turn off the Orion, I power it back on and I get like this kind of um, a factory reset required screen. And I'm like, oh crap, what are we doing now? Going on the forums real quick, people mention that this battery, it's almost like your CMOS battery on a computer, this battery might be dead. So sure enough, I did the route of what this person tried to do, the original owner, whoever had this, originally tried this and I guess failed. Basically now, I have the CMOS battery, that 2032 battery, wired into this battery. So I didn't want to take my risk like that guy did where he burnt, you know, he soldered and he kind of missed and he's got burn marks on the actual board. I didn't want to take that risk uh, on this. I got to work on the focus on my camera. <laughs> so basically what I did is that I soldered to the actual metal of this battery and you can see there it's actually like a leg so i'm not soldered to the battery i'm actually soldered to the leg of this same thing on this side here you could see that leg that metal leg right there that sticks up that is all right here so that again on the old board this was like he soldered this and it was burnt anyway long story short it works and the battery works. So now I am no longer getting a factory reset required. Basically now this battery is powered. That's it. I want to, let's get this in. <laughs> we'll put this back together, but man, what a, what a, what a thing. And I've had it kind of like jerry rig sitting on the, on the door. And as I'm working on this, you can see, I have the motherboard kind of like laying out. Uh, we have this, um, breakout board here this this is what it looked like for about a month and the craziest thing is that i've gotten shocked a couple of times on this power supply here it's a bare power supply and sure enough like i would if you touch the metal right here you get a nice little wake up jolt but all in all it does work let's get this thing back into the orion all right so finally got it in now i can't lie to you this is a hack job this is the definition of a hack job. As you can see, I got it to work. Now, when I'm, I didn't, I didn't do this. I, I did this right now. I cut the camera. I'm like, okay, let me finalize this. I now realize possibly why this guy modified this board or fucked it up. Basically, this battery here, this whole board actually goes behind this metal. It's like a cage. With this battery here, it no longer fit flush against the cage. I don't care. I could give two shits. This is inside the cabinet. This works. I put a couple of screws. Again, hack job on this. I put some styrofoam bubble wrap. This way it doesn't, you know, metal doesn't touch metal because you never really want that to happen. All in all, it works. Then you'll go see I did my double-sided tape battery job. This is it. This is done.
this goes in. Now, the only slight thing I have, honestly, is that upon testing it, I have no audio. Here comes another hack job I had to do. Now, this kind of pertains to the I.O. board. There are people in the forums that said, be careful because when you swap out these boards, you may lose the audio. Um, there is actually an AUX port on the I.O. board, and I tried this already, didn't work. Basically, on the motherboard here, you can't really see it, but there is a very thin ribbon cable right here. Basically, utilizing DuPonts. There's my, there it is. That's the ribbon cable there. Uh, no matter what, I tried it on the I.O. board. There's, there's a connector for the I.O. board for audio and there's a connector for the breakout board for audio. Originally, it was right here. The audio connector was right here on the side to the breakout board. Doesn't work. Either way, I cannot get audio unless I do a hack job, which is four. There's four, you know, it's a four connector here. Left speaker, right speaker, positive and negative. Basically, I have very small DuPont wires and... It's just, it's a bridge. I give two shits. It works though. I tested this outside the cabin. That's why I'm making this video now. This is hard set. It's gonna slide in and out. And then I will have a ghetto rigged four wire DuPont connector. But all in all, I'm happy with the way this is right now. Let's get it into the cabinet. This way we can finally finish the Orion. <laughs> and now the icing on the cake. Yes. The power supply no longer slides. It is officially bolted into the cabinet like it should be. <laughs> Let's take a look. All right, it is officially in wired and all. It is totally mobile. Also, I don't know, I'll bring you in close real quick or I'll just take a picture of it. You can see my wiring audio hack job, but the best thing out of all, it does work. That is the most important thing. All the connectors are here. Basically now we could close this up and play. Again, this does have a dollar bill acceptor here. I don't have the actual bill acceptor. I haven't tested the coin though. Um, I should probably take a second and I'll, I'll test that real quick. So again, just bring you in close. You can see everything here. Again, I'm gonna probably tape this down. This right here again is the audio hack. So again, it's a ground, which is the green, followed by left and right. So that right there. Now you might be saying, Vic, why don't you just cut this and make a connector? I don't want to do that because in case maybe in the future somebody finds or needs another IO board, maybe it's an easy, quick connect. So I don't want to do that. This is just quick and easy. And again, DuPont wires, they're not going to really go anywhere. I can play around with it. It's not a moving, but yes, there you go. When my camera focuses, you have the heart. Now, honestly, this system here, whoever did the, like, you know, design of this this is just bad this is a shitload of wires <laughs> that's yeah i don't like this design at all went real quick grab two quarters they usually have quarters here but if i put the quarter in it makes a yum noise definitely we are getting registration for the quarter so this works can i play a game let's see gone fishing We're good. It works. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, it works. Coin and all. I can't test the dollar bill except because I don't have one, but that's it. Close this up. Let's talk. All right, so I try to keep my videos nice, clean, short, and sweet, but you know me, I like to talk. You basically just saw me kind of talking about this board that I got and all that. Uh, again, I, I literally shot that like an hour ago, so uh, my I have brain fog of what exactly I said. But again, let me just kind of reiterate what I said. Basically, again, after a couple of days going on a forum known as arcadecontrols.com, uh, they're really the only ones that have like this touch screen type of forum option for mega touches and JBL. And in all brutal honesty, this category, it is dry. Nobody is really posting on that. I posted three things. Um, in the beginning, I posted, you know, pictures and I said, you know, is this right? I'm getting an IO board error. Basic common stuff. There's been one or two guys, I forgot their names, very cool, awesome guys, um, giving me some tips. Uh, I sent pictures of the motherboard. I was worried about maybe there's a cross in the wire. Because again, the biggest thing is that this I.O. board, this, is, this was the issue here, this had lights on it. 
And normally, if you see lights, you're like, okay, this thing is alive. It works. It's got power going to it. It can't be this thing. It surely cannot. But sure enough, this thing was the fucking problem. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. Again, you would think that there's no lights. Maybe there's a bo It's so crazy. Um, again, this thing right here is the issue. Now, again, somebody before me, there is this thing, and it's also, it, it happens to many other classic, I, would, I wouldn't really say arcade games, uh, but it could happen on arcade games, but it does also happen on pinball, where people have these battery leak issues. Basically, batteries will leak, it destroys game boards, and people put like other alternatives, like I've seen people do for pinball, they take out this kind of, I don't know, I don't want to call it a CMOS battery, whatever it is, it's a battery that leaks, and they swap it out for like four AA battery type of compartment thing. That's what I think happened with this, but as you can see in the video I just posted, um, the battery wouldn't fit in the cage. So it's kind of like maybe he had this board, he had to remove the battery, so many things going on. But like I said, my original board, I was trying to find this exact original board, and again, I, you couldn't find it. I was looking for like Rev 5.2, like I mentioned before. So many things, because I'm the type where it came with this, I need the exact duplicate of this to bring it back to life. Now that I have the board with the battery on it, I still put a CMOS, that 2032 or 3023 uh, watch battery that you can find on PC boards or even in your watch. I still had to connect that to get this thing to work because basically the battery on this is kind of, it's got memory on it. The battery will keep the memory to it. So for example, on this Orion situation or any JVL, it kind of keeps your calibration settings it also keeps your uh, credit settings and, uh, yeah, if you want to do free play and such. So, yeah, this thing needed a battery, and luckily I had that nice little holder battery thing, and I'm just happy it works. <laughs> now, again, keep in mind, it's actually funny because the actual Orion video just went out yesterday. Uh, this, you kind of tell, like I said, I shoot my videos, and then I have them set to go out certain days. It's crazy that, again, February 12 or 13 was the Super Bowl, and now, March 19, a month and a couple of days after, I finally got it to work. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I mentioned before, I almost junked this thing. I almost called it quits, because I just, it was impossible to find this IO board, and it is still impossible to find it. Uh, people have said, though, that they have taken this and actually converted it to a Mega Touch. I could have done that. Um, I probably would have done that. But, you know, I really wanted to get this JVL working, and I was honestly going to put it up for sale as is and stuff. But it's just a big relief that it finally works. I got a couple of things. I haven't fully played it yet. But honestly, this thing is a little bit faster than the Mega Touch. And in all brutal honesty, the reason why I would, I'm going to aim to keep this, I got to tell the wife. <laughs> I got to make room, I should say. Uh, yeah, you got that will be disabled with this strip poker thing. Um, it's got more, f I would say, kid-friendly games. So me now with a three-year-old, her birthday's actually today. Um, me with a three-year-old, she's actually enjoying the game, more of the game styles on this than the Mega Touch. Uh, but then again, I haven't really dabbled into all of them. The biggest thing, honestly, this does also have card games such as like Texas Hold'em. So, uh, and I think also has poker. So that's also another plus. I don't, now that it works, this is staying with me. <laughs> this is, to me, a big piece of history, and again, Finding parts for this thing, it is not easy. Now again, I got very lucky. I don't know what happened. Maybe the somebody's watching over me. But basically, you know, I guess I put a search term in eBay. And, um, you know, eBay goes by like the exact terminology you use. But then if you just keep scrolling down, it'll kind of show you like related items. And that was the thing about this guy that, again, I called him an asshole before. Um, you know, this guy didn't even word the part correctly. Uh, he used the terminology of like JVL Vortex or JVL Retro. I didn't. I still don't even understand what that is. I just know JVL Orion. That's what I have. It's an Orion. But apparently it's either a Retro or a Vortex system inside of this. But it's modified for an or. Long story short, basically, as I quickly, it caught my eye, the image that he posted. And I'm like, wait a minute. That looks like the board that I need, that I had in my hand. And then sure enough... It is great. Again, I mentioned the thing about the eBay story. My long story short on that eBay thing, it's just kind of annoying that people, number one, don't read the message. Or they do see the message and they just don't want to talk to you. That's fucking annoying. And then the fact that the guy raised the price, that really ticked me off. Not going to lie to you. For like a day, 
I was kicking myself in the ass. I was like, I should have just bought it at 56. Now he wants like 96 or whatever it was. I was kicking myself in the ass. And then sure enough, once I got the notification from eBay that the price dropped, I pulled the trigger and I bought it because obviously, after sending like three or four offers, this guy's not even fucking answering my messages. I said, screw it, I'm gonna bite the bullet. So right now my free 99 Orion is now a $56 game. <laughs> That's all I spent. $56 and I think 12 cents. That's all it took to bring it back to life. I'll never forget that feeling. I got that IO board in the mail. I plugged it in, put it on. I was like, please, please, please. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I had the same IO board error. And I'm like, oh no, I wasted $56. Then sure enough, I looked very carefully. And like I said, I had this computer just hanging on the door. It was totally dismantled. Just like how I kind of just showed you in the beginning. That's how it was for a month. Uh, and basically I looked very carefully. I actually had a wire. One of those ribbon cables was not in. And uh, I even went, I was like, oh my God, that, I went back to like footage. Anyway, I reconnect that wire and then sure enough, it booted. It gave me this JVL vac factory reset required message. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine. Maybe it's because of this. Powered it on. My screen calibration wasn't correct. Uh, basically, like if I touched here, it would be off a little bit, maybe by like a half of an inch. I went into the settings, the setup button worked on the IO board. It was all great. I powered off the unit, powered it back on because I'm like, you know, I want to make sure it powers on. I had the same issue with that factory reset. Uh, and then again, normally on those IO boards, you usually get a message or it, it maybe it did appear, but you have to really look carefully at that BIOS boot lines that really quickly appear. Uh, sometimes you get a message that either says the IO board battery is very low or it'll say the IO board battery is dead. I didn't see it unless I was, unless I could have recorded it and like slow motion it. I didn't see it. Basically took out the IO board and I soldered that CMOS battery, watch battery holder thing. Got that on Amazon for like two bucks for I think a, a pack of 10. And uh, I'm just so happy that we are at this stage and it works. Booted, plays, sound, like I said, I showed you. I had to modify the audio because honestly, that right there for about 30 to 45 minutes, I was trying to figure out what the hell is up with the audio, um, going in and out of the boards and all that. All in all, it does work. Yes, my audio is jerry-rigged. I could make a better connector, like kind of like using like LED connectors. I just, I have this thing where let's say I do sell it. I don't want to cut stock connectors, like especially on a machine like this. It's not like a, you know, an arcade cabinet that I'm building. Uh, this is like stock, so I don't want to mess up something that where if somebody actually, you know, replaces the board and it could be a quick thing. I'm the, I'm the type I don't fuck around with like original stuff. Same thing like for example with that Ultimate Arcade, I still have the original hardware as like a cut, you know, you could swappable stuff. So it is what it is. Game booted on. The only slight thing I do notice on the CRT, you're not really going to see it on video, but basically on the CRT, you kind of see like this, this frame here that's actually burned in. You could see this, it's literally like this. It's, it's that much you can see burned in. And you can also see a faint line here that it is burned in. But other than that, I mean, you really have to be looking at it. Um, if I played a game which was beach volleyball, basically a game with a white background, you could see that faint line here. You could see the outline. I don't think you're gonna see it on the camera. Now again, cameras, trying to capture CRTs. I could see it now. This like, it's like, you know, the line is going slow. You don't see that here. That's just basic stock CRT stuff. But yeah, my kiddo loves this game. This volleyball game, you're a gerbil. Awesome, it's, I'm just so happy it works. <laughs> and the biggest thing is that the audio is great. The audio is actually very loud. I have it set to like 100% max. Now, I'll be honest, I, I was almost gonna put an audio amp in this thing, because when I first connected it and I had both speakers, it wasn't loud. I had it at 100%, I'm like, wow, this is like so faint. I was like, I have a spare amp for my old V-pin. Maybe I was gonna do that, but then sure enough, like I did a quick reboot and I, maybe I swapped the wire out, and now it's like loud. Like right now, I can't even play the game without me shouting over the game to it. But all in all, amazing. It is, it's definitely different. Um, if you want to compare this to like the Mega Touch, it's got Mega Touch esque games, or it's got Mega, it's got Mega Touch games, but it's kind of like um, you could tell 
that they copied Mega Touch. <laughs> so it's 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 pretty funny. I haven't played every single game. That's what I'm really excited to play. I'm right now trying to look for a game um, that the Mega Touch has. Where it's basically like a mo it's called it was it was called Monster Bash on Mega Touch, where basically you get like a stack of um, colors. Uh, I'm gonna probably cut this and I'll find out where this game is. I finally found it after like five minutes. It's actually Pirates, Pirate Madness. This is Mega Touch's. I believe it's called Monster Mash or Monster Bash. So basically, you gotta bring down the characters. You're gonna want them to fall. It is a strategic game. See, I have no more moves. I didn't do that very good. Again, this right here is definitely a Mega Touch game uh, copied. <laughs> copied good? I can't. I know my Mega Touch. So, yeah, I know my Mega Touch. I'm gonna have to lower the volume. It's a little loud. Let me lower the volume. So, again, everything convenient right now, right at the coin door. I press the setup button. I'm gonna go into my general settings, volume. And we'll lower it just for video purposes. Usually like this, even my Mega Touch, I usually have the sound up. Uh, a couple of adjustments. The menu is pretty cool. It's honestly just like Mega Touch. You can even set the timing for the erotic stuff. Uh, show bad words on. I do have that. I have answers off. Whatever it is. This is basic stuff. The date and time on this though is 2003. That stuff I usually don't touch. Because sometimes on Mega Touches, if you put the wrong date, it won't even boot anymore. Something like that uh again i have all the games enabled so there's a way you could disable games pretty cool awesome stuff now that we have the volume low let's check out some more games and all honestly no matter where i put you you're gonna just see the screen how it is again the big thing to note i will be brutally honest this this is much snappier this is faster than the mega touch i'm loading games i'm able to play the game i'm able to exit it actually is quite quick uh, so I will give it that. Uh, again, though, a lot of different style games, different games compared to the Mega Touch. Even when it comes to like strategy, um, again, you got to kind of. I really haven't played every single game, obviously, but I kind of wish. Uh, I mean, it is your standard video. You could even do like video preview with the sound. It'll actually activate the sound. Look at the video on this. It's like very. It looks great, honestly. It's. I'm very surprised by it. Uh, virtual attack. Um, uh, there's like, uh, we were doing like some straight racing. Like, look at this. This is, you got to actually like shift. Again, different style games. And again, like a game like this for like, I don't know, Monster Truck, for example. I feel like it's good for like my kiddo. My kiddo was playing, um, I think we were playing racing. We were playing beach volleyball. Different. We, all, we were actually also playing, I want to do that real quick. Um, uh, we were playing tennis. And it made me crack up because it is another duplicate of a Mega Touch game. Uh, again, just just finding the game though is uh, tennis. This right here, again, volume low. This right here is uh, you know you want to play Mega Touch tennis. We have Mega Touch tennis at home. <laughs> so it's actually very funny. Look at that, like dr this this. I know I know the CRT, but that right there is like a stock tennis ball. It's actually very challenging because the it you'll see. Like, let's do it. Let's, I hope the computer actually plays. It kind of like blows up. You see that? It's like a tiny speck, and then pff, it just blows up. But again, this right here is and it's it's a copy of a game on the Mega Touch. Uh, interesting. Pretty cool. Again, it's just great to actually you know go into touchscreen gaming. Now, just like the Mega Touch, usually on the top right you have the exit. Uh, pretty cool. The one game that like keeps catching my eye. It does have pinball. <laughs> there is an, an actual option for pinball. Again, different style games. Honestly, now um, I would look into the, the 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 last JVL system, which is a bar top. I believe it's called like the iTouch HD or something like that. Look, they even have Hoop Jones. I haven't played Hoop Jones yet. <laughs> this is Hoop Jones. This is <laughs> next round at 500. I'm horrible at Hoop Jones on on the Mega Touch. Oh, wow. Oh, usually the hoop goes back. They probably had some copyright issues and was like, we cannot be Hoop Jones. <laughs> awesome, though. There's like another game that I'm just, I'm trying to find it. It's like, um, 
It's like you're you're you own a restaurant. Not last call. That's an interesting one. We should play that soon. <laughs> uh, you own like a restaurant and you're trying to feed the patrons. Uh, again, it's just like you got to kind of figure out where the game is. Look at this realty tycoon. You want to be a tycoon and build the town and the city? Go ahead with JVL. Oh, I got to find it. I'll cut. Hold on. Found it. It is called Fast Food. Fast Food. I haven't played this yet. If I touch the preview. Again, it's like you're a server. My kid loves these style games. I have her own um, the, the touch screen system that I built, the touch edition. She likes these style of games where like the people come to the desk and then you gotta make a burger. Uh, so let's just see how this game is. Again, different style games. It's it's very cool. It's two different worlds really. So what, th wow, this girl wants a lot of stuff. Let's see how this works. So I'm starting up this burger. She wants ice cream. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Now I have to wait. Oh, she has it in her hand. You'd be surprised, like I said, yes, my kiddo is into this stuff. She, um, she might be three, but she does, uh, she does enjoy this. So let's see if I can put her fries. We've got to get this girl a burger. Awesome. I mean, again, it's just a different style of game. <laughs> now, real quick, look at the card games. This has quite a lot of card games. Texas Hold'em seems to be very popular. Um, a little bit of poker. I don't know if there's an actual poker here. Uh, Flush 21, I know you have strip poker when you go into the erotic section. The big thing, this doesn't have slot machines or gambling stuff. That's where my Touch Edition, Game Case Arcade Touch Edition, Windows Base PC, all in ones. I get that request a lot. People want gambling kind of, you know, roulette, slot machines and all that. That's where my Touch Edition comes into play. If you really actually look carefully, especially for my kiddo, my kiddo now has a JVL. She has a Mega Touch, or I should really say me. I have a JVL, I have a Mega Touch, I have two Mega Touches, and I do have a Touch Edition that she really plays with because uh, it's connected to like Flash games and all that. So I, I, have, I have the best of all worlds, <laughs> really, when it comes to touchscreen gaming. So again, JVL, oh, there you go, there's some Draw Poker, uh, Blackjack, again, Mega Touch, I don't really, I don't quote me on it, but I don't believe it has that many card games. Now, real quick, I mean, you can't really see erotic, obviously. You could do male and female. I have the female stuff unlocked. Previews are censored and all that, but it's pretty cool. But you also do have strip poker. Um, so, yes, there's your erotic stuff. 2714. It's 14 erotic games to it. All in all, amazing. And again, like I said, snappy. It's a very snappy, it's a snappy system going in and out. Exit and all, once you get that corner... I guess you have to first pick your character and then you can finally exit out of the system, the game. Awesome, yeah, there you go. Awesome, digging it. Well, there you have it. The JVL Orion is back in working, functioning order. Uh, I'm gonna probably have this up for sale. I already know that the price I'm gonna put it at, it probably won't sell. Um, people kind of see these things, same thing with Mega Touches, especially like the Max Editions. They see these as dated systems, not to mention it is difficult. It is. I've, I've experienced it firsthand. It is very difficult to find replacement parts for this uh, or anything retro, even Mega Touches. Trying to find like touch controllers, it gets difficult. These, these companies are no longer in business, so you can't really, you know, go to Mega, uh, Mega Touch or even JBL.com and really get replacement parts. I just feel lucky that I was able to find the part. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna send a picture of this working to the kid that I got it from, you know, for free. I don't wanna rub it in his face. <laughs> but it was not an easy task. It wasn't easy getting this thing up. It works though, it is up, it is running. I'm excited to play it. This and the Mega Touch, they are VGA connections, so I can't really stream this. Um, not to mention, let alone getting the audio capture and all that, I would probably just put a camera up. I would love to stream this and the Mega Touches, but um, it is what it is. The Orion here, honestly, whoever designed this cabinet, uh, I'm glad that this is the only version they've ever made. It is a bitch and a half. Um, if I wanted to take off this gray panel here, you gotta take apart the whole thing. You gotta start from the top, work your way down, the only probably thing, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not big on that LED wise, but this right here, we do have like that halogen bulb. Maybe I'll change that to an LED strip. Right now it works. 
That was the main thing I needed and it works. Now I could experience some JVL gaming, but I will not lie to you. I am now looking for the JVL bar top. JVL has a bar top, it's a very big screen. It's like their last version before going bankrupt, like Mega Touch. Mega Touch has, I have it downstairs. The, um, what's it called? I'm drawing a blank on the, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called, but I have one, the one I bought from Captain's Auctions. Um, I would look into that. Uh, I would look into seeing if it has this, if it has the same games in this, plus more, I would offer a trade for this. Um, don't get me wrong though, this is great, this is awesome, CRT works, it is a great screen, it looks great, colors are amazing, no vertical collapse, nothing like that at all. Oh, I love it. It works, that is like the, I, I get so much satisfaction. Once I saw the screen turn on, I'm like, ah, I grabbed the kiddo, and I get if you see and follow me on Facebook and on Instagram, I should say, TikTok, you'll see like the kiddo getting all excited <laughs> when daddy gets a new game that works and all that, so yes, there you guys have it. The JBL Orion. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think? And again, I've always said it. Every game room should have a touchscreen gaming system. Whether you go JBL or you go with me, I am a fanboy on the Mega Touches. Who knows? Maybe my opinion will change. But in all honesty, seeing those one or two games that are duplicates or copies of Mega Touch, Mega Touch is king. <laughs> on that note, Vic VP, Game Days Arcades. The Orion, it's back. <laughs>